Good day, my angels, and welcome to lesson three in the unit. It's the fourth lesson because I started with lesson zero to introduce the concept of voltage to you. Let's talk a little bit about what we've learned so far. Remember, we said that voltage is the amount of energy per coulomb. If you're wondering where that definition is on your formula sheet, I would have given it to you in the previous unit on electrostatics, but I cut that short. But there it is. The change in voltage is the change in potential energy per coulomb, or just voltage is how much energy per coulomb. A changing voltage is going to be a little more important. We're going to be talking about that. But that's where that definition is. Then we talked about what current was. We defined current as the amount of charge per second, basically how fast charges are moving. It's not really a velocity. How much charge is going through a given area per second. So I shouldn't really say how fast. We gave you Ohm's law, V equals I times R, where V was the voltage, I was the current, and R was the resistance. And then last day I gave you Joule's law, which is how we define electric power. It's equal to V times I, but if I plug the I times R for V in, I get I squared R, or if I plug the fact that I equals V over R into this equation, I get V squared over R. And basically I said to you what that means is if I know any two of power, current, voltage, and resistance, I can find the other two. You're going to hear me say today quite a bit, if I know two things, I know four things. Today and the next lesson are the two fundamental lessons of the unit, along with Ohm's Law and Joule's Law. We're going to be learning the basics on how to solve circuits. We're going to be learning Kirchhoff's laws for voltage and for current. Two rules that basically allow you to solve circuits. And I'm going to be teaching you a method called the Ski Hill method. There are all sorts of methods that you can use. Uh, there's a way to do this with systems of equations purely mathematically. And that's how I taught it at first. But then I spoke to the physics teacher at SRT. He gave me what I felt was a much more intuitive method. So I'm going to be giving you that analogy. Uh, first of all, though, we have a thought puzzle. Once again, it's time for you to vote. How high you hold your hand up is how sure you are of the answer. Now, you're going to feel a little silly sitting by yourself, sticking your hand in the air. Don't worry about it. No one's going to know. So, here's the question. Will this bird get a shock sitting on a bare high voltage line? Yes or no? Who says yes? Keep your hands up. Yes, the bird will get a shock. Hmm. No one said that. So you've all seen that birds can land on high power lines and not get a shock. So the real question isn't, will this bird get a shock? No. The real question is, why not? Why doesn't the bird get a shock? And the answer is that for current to flow, we actually need a change in voltage, a difference in voltage. When this bird lands on this power line, there is very, very rapidly, the bird is brought up to the same voltage as the power line, and no current will flow. That's why on the formula sheet back here, it said we need a change in voltage. That's why we talk about a potential difference or a change in potential. We're going to be talking about that more in today's lesson. So, here we go. Kirchhoff's laws for circuits. There are two laws. There is Kirchhoff's current law, which I abbreviate as KCL, and there is Kirchhoff's voltage law, which I abbreviate as KVL. You don't need to know which one is which, but you are going to need to know the laws, okay? So Kirchhoff's current law, it comes out of the idea that charge is conserved, that electrons and protons can't magically vanish from a circuit. Or if we go to our ski hill analogy, since we said that charge, that current, was the skiers, you're not allowed to lose skiers. A ski hill can't operate if skiers go missing. It states that at a junction between wires, current flow splits or combines and continues to flow downhill. 
when the current splits or combines, no charge is lost, so that the total flow into the junction equals the total flow out of the junction. Now that seems terribly, terribly confusing and wordy. I'm going to write it mathematically in a second, but it's easier if I just do an example here. So it says this, in terms of the ski hill analogy, the current law means that if three skiers, if three amps are coming in, if I have two amps coming in and I have one amp coming in to a junction of a circuit, then I have three amps flowing out. The amount of current coming in has to equal the amount of current coming out. So don't write this down. I would like to write total current in equals total current out. But that's too much writing, and you know I like to abbreviate. We have a symbol for the total or the sum of, and you may have seen it in your math classes. It's this thing right here. So this is the Greek letter sigma, and it means the sum of, or the total. So the total current in has to equal the total current out. I also have to admit we get really lazy in math. The sigma symbol looks like that. Uh, typically, we often just write it as like a W on its side or an M on its side. We get pretty sloppy. We don't put the fancy little hooks on the end, and we don't even worry about trying to be all nice and parallel. Okay. So current in equals current out. So example one says find the unknown currents. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. Okay. So when I'm solving a circuit, the first thing that I want to do is figure out which way is downhill. Here's my battery. The longer line is the positive line. The shorter line is the negative line, and we said current is defined as flowing from positive to negative. So I always put little arrows, and this is what I'm going to encourage you to do first. Put little arrows on your circuit, letting you know which way is downhill. That also lets you just kind of move through the circuit and get a feel for it. So here we go. Let's solve this. How many amps do I have right here? Well, right here I have... 1.75 amps. So how many amps went through this resistor? 1.75 amps. How many amps went through this resistor? 1.75 amps. How many amps are right here? 1.75 amps. How many amps are right here? 1.75 amps. How many amps are leaving the battery right there if I had asked for it? 1.75 amps. And this current leaving the battery you're going to find is one of my keys to solving a circuit. You're going to hear me say, if I know the total current leaving the battery, the question's going to fall apart. And if I don't know the total current leaving the battery, that's what I'm going to try and figure out first. Here's a little more interesting. So again, here's the battery. Downhill is that way that way, and I guess it splits up. The current goes that way and that way. Around the outside, that's downhill, that's downhill, which means that's the current direction, and that's downhill, that's downhill, which means that's the current direction. So I answered part of the question already. Now let's ski. How many amps do I have right here? Right here, I have three amps. So, 3.0 amps, how many amps do I have leaving the battery? Well, for what it's worth, I would have 3.0 amps, because there's no junctions between this 3 amps and the battery. But there is a junction right here. 0.8 amps went down this way. That must mean that 2.2 amps went that way, because the amount of current flowing in 3 amps has to equal the amount of current flowing out, 3 amps. How many amps 
going through this resistor. I didn't ask for it, but I know that resistor has 2.2 amps. Oh, definitely 2.2 amps right here. Then they recombine, and I end up with 3.0 amps going back to the battery, or as I think of it, as the bottom of the chairlift. So here's the chairlift raising the charges to a higher height, a higher voltage. As they go through the circuit, the charges, 3 amps worth, break apart, they split up, and then they recombine. Example 2 says show the direction of each current and find the unknown currents. So that's downhill, that's downhill, that's downhill, that's downhill, 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 downhill. Remember, the electrons actually flow in the opposite direction of the arrows, but the arrows are showing which way the positives would flow if they could, because that makes the math much nicer. Right here is current leaving the battery. Okay. Hmm. Do I know how many amps, how many skiers are leaving the battery, the chairlift? Yeah, I do. Because right here, it looks like 5 amps went to the right and 8 amps went down, which means since I have 13 amps flowing out, I must have had 13 amps flowing in, which must mean that this is 13 amps. The total current leaving the battery is 13 amps. Now let's follow this top line. 5 amps went this way. There's another junction right here. 2 amps went down. This must be 3 amps. Let's continue to follow this ski run. 3 amps, 3 amps, 3 amps, 3 amps, 3... Ooh! 3 amps. They recombine right here. I have 2 amps coming in. I have 3 amps coming in. This has got to be 5 amps. And this 8 amp junction meets up with this 5 amp junction. 13 amps, and I end up with the total current again going through the chairlift. Next one. Uh, let's see. This is the positive side, so this is downhill. Downhill. I guess we break up into three sections. That way is downhill, downhill. That's downhill. That's downhill. And that's downhill. So, do I know how many amps are leaving the battery? Uh, well, not... Uh, ooh, wait, 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 wait. Right there, I have five amps. And I think, if I kind of work my way back, I think that's the total current leaving the battery, because although that current splits up in this section right here, uh, I think it recombines. I think I have... 5 amps leaving the battery. Here, there's a three-way split up. 0.5 amps go there. 2 amps go there. This has got to be 2.5 amps. They recombine. 5 amps. Oop, here's another split up. 2 amps went this way. It's got to be 3 amps went that way. So this is Kirchhoff's current law. Law for currents. Current in has to equal current out. This way is downhill, 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 downhill. Uh, looks like I have 4.5 amps going through this resistor, and you know what? For what it's worth, that means I must have 4.5 amps leaving the battery. I know the current leaving the battery. This question's going to fall apart. So 4.5 amps goes this way, 1 amp goes down, this has got to be 3.5 amps. This has got to be 3.5 amps. This has got to be 3.5 amps. Down this branch, 1 amp, you know what? 1 amp must be going through that resistor as well, then they recombine, this must be 4.5 amps.
the amount of flow, the current, along a particular path from a junction. It depends on the resistance. So if the resistance of each path leading away from a junction is the same, what can be said about the splitting of the current? For instance, find the unknown currents below. If this is 6 amps, well, for what it's worth, if you have two identical resistors, you can safely say that they'll split up evenly 3 amps apiece. You can survive without that. I think once or twice I've used this as a shortcut. I think you might actually have to use it for a couple of questions in the homework. But, yeah, okay, it kind of makes sense. Identical resistors will take identical currents if you try and split the current up. It'll, they'll split the current up 50-50. Um, if one path has more resistance, what can we say? So if we have a small current and a big current, sorry, I said small current, small resistor versus a big resistor. Remember we said that resistance, a uh, higher resistance, meant a narrower ski run with deeper powder. So this will have, and this will have, in other words, I know that I1 will be larger than I2. And in fact, it will work as multiples of each other. So for example, if this resistor is R and this resistor is 2R, this current will be twice as big as this current. How can you divide 6 amps up so that this current is twice as big as this current? Yeah, it's going to have to be 4 amps and 2 amps. Got to be honest, I hardly ever use this ratio trick. I sometimes use the whole, uh, if two resistors are identical, they'll split up 50-50 but you can survive just fine without this ratio trick. It's a nice shortcut is all. That's the current law. That's the easy one. The voltage law is trickier. Kirchhoff's voltage law, which you might see me abbreviate as KVL, it comes out of conservation of energy. It says that as charges flow around the circuit, they experience voltage gains in the battery cell and voltage drops or losses in the resistor. For every path through the circuit, the gains equal the losses. Say, what? Mathematically, we say this. The sum of all the voltage gain has to equal the sum of all the voltage lost. And since voltage is energy per coulomb, what we're really saying is you can't gain or lose energy in a circuit. In terms of our ski hill analogy, it says that the chairlift takes you to the top of the mountain. Remember we said that the chairlift was like the battery and that voltage was like height. From there, as you ski down the bottom path, the sum of the drops must equal the height of the mountain. In other words, if your energy source is a 6 volt battery, and if you lose 4 volts going through that ski run, you have to lose 2 volts going through that ski run. Now, because we know that you're always losing voltage going through a resistor, we get sloppy. We don't actually put the negative. We just know uh, you're losing voltage. So, example 4 says, find the unknown voltages and drops. Again, let's label downhill that way, that way, that way, that way. So basically we're saying as charges go through the battery, they gain 20 volts of energy per coulomb. They gain a height of 20 volts, which means right now the charges are 20 volts high. They're just skiing on level ground through the battery, through the wires right now. And here is the first ski hill, this first resistor. So we're still 20 volts high, but we lose 8 volts going through this resistor. How many volts do we have here? 12 volts. I don't know how many volts that I lost going through this resistor, 
but I do know that that was able to get me back to the bottom of the chairlift, which has a height of zero. I must have lost 12 volts going through that resistor to get me down to the ground. Again, let's label downhill. So we're gaining 10 volts. Uh, I'm, there's looks like there's several ski runs. There's this one. And then there's this one. There's two different ski runs where I'm skiing downhill. Uh, this one here doesn't count because at some point you'd be skiing uphill if you follow it with your pencil. And skiers don't ski uphill. We need a chairlift. So it looks like here we're gaining 10 volts from the battery which means right here I still have 10 volts. If I ski down this way, whee, that gets me down to the ground, which must mean that here I have zero volts and I must have lost 10 volts going through the resistor. I can also ski this ski run. So, okay, I start out with 10 volts. I must have 10 volts at the top of this ski run. Whee! I go down the ski hill. That gets me down to the ground, and I can tell I'm down to the ground or to the bottom because I'm zero volts here and there's no other resistors. So zero volts, and I must have lost 10 volts going through that ski run, through that resistor. Do a couple more. Example five says find the unknown voltages and voltage drops. Okay. Label downhill. We're gaining 12 volts. What that means is we have to lose 12 volts if I go through this ski run, because that gets me to the bottom of the chairlift. And I have to lose 12 volts if I go through this ski run, because that also gets me to the bottom of the chairlift, bottom of the battery. So when I say chairlift, I'm using that as an analogy for battery. Okay. Well, we start with 12 volts, so right here we're at a height of voltage of 12 volts. We lose 8 volts going through this particular resistor. So that must mean that we have 4 volts at the top of this hill. Whee! That got me to the ground because here I'm 0 volts high. I can tell because if I follow it, I'm zero volts high here, and I didn't go through any hills, any resistors. So I must have lost four volts going through that resistor. Go back to here. I'm still eight, uh, 12 volts high. I lost eight volts. So right here, I am four volts high. Whee! Uh, oop, that got me down to the ground. Four volts. Here's another one, a little bigger. There we go. 60 volt gain. That's downhill. That's downhill. That way is downhill. That way is downhill. That way is downhill. That way is downhill. So if I go through this ski run here, I have to lose a total of 60 volts. If I go through this ski run here, always skiing downhill, I have to lose a total of, you guessed it, 60 volts. Otherwise, how could I start on the mountain 60 volts high and end up back at the bottom of the chairlift, which is zero volts high? So let's follow through the smaller ski run, the smaller loop. 60 volts, I lose 15. So right here, I must have 45 volts. Whee! I lose 18 volts. 45 take away 18 is 35 take away 8 is I must have 27 volts left. Dee -dee 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 so I'm at 27 volts right here. Then I go through this resistor. Ooh, that got me down to the ground. I must have lost 27 volts going through that resistor. 
Now, if I ski this outside run, start with 60 volts, I lose 15 volts, leaving 45. So I also have 45 volts high here. Whee! I lose 10. That gives me 35 volts. Whee! I don't know how. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Apparently, at the bottom of this hill, I'm 27 volts high. So I must have lost 35 to 27. I must have lost 8 volts. Has to have. By the way, I want you to notice, if we were skiers, it, you could think of it this way. Right here, we split up. You're a better skier than me, so you went down the great big hill and you lost 18 volts. See it? I'm not as good a skier, so I went down two smaller hills, one 10 volts high and one 8 volts high. Notice I still lost the same 18 volts as you did, and I had to have because we were able to meet up at the bottom, and the only way we could meet up is if we were at the same height on the mountain, the same voltage. filled in all the gaps. Yep. So there's really two useful conclusions that we can draw from Kirchhoff's voltage law. So the first one is for any complete loop around the circuit, the voltage drops equals the voltage gains. So for example, here I gained 60 volts. I must have lost 60 volts, 15, 18, 27. Or here I gained 60 volts if I go this way. I must have lost 60 volts, 15, 10, 8, 27. And the second really handy thing is, no matter which way you go between two points, say here to here, the voltage drops must be the same. I lost 18 volts going down that path. I lost 18 volts going down that path. And the way I know that must be true is we started and ended at the same location. To see the voltage relationships, sometimes for a really complicated circuit, you might find it helpful at first to redraw the circuit so that everything is pointing downhill. For example, the previous circuit 5A, which looked like this, you could draw it as this picture here. Big chairlift. Here's the chairlift. Everyone goes down that hill. Everyone goes through that hill. And then right here, we split up. Some people go down this hill. Some people go down this hill. But then we all meet up and we finish off together. So that green matches that, that purple matches that, and that yellow matches that. I'm not a big fan of redrawing stuff if I don't have to, so I'm going to encourage you, use the redrawing method as a last resort. So 5B could be redrawn like this. So here's the original circuit. And we would say, okay, everyone gains 60 volts going through the chairlift. Everyone loses 15 volts here. And then the better skiers go on this 18-volt hill, which is a little higher. The weaker skiers go on the 10-volt hill, followed by the 8-volt hill. Still going through 18 volts of loss, so we are still going to end up at the same height. And then all of us go through the final hill, which was, I think, 27 volts, if I recall. Is that right, 27? Yeah. I think so. Got to double check. Yeah, I was right. Okay. Uh, example 6 says rewrite the equations. Eh, I'm not going to do that. Okay, if there are several resistors along a path, the charges lose a proportion, a fraction of their voltage, their energy per coulomb, their height in each. So if we have two identical resistors, 
what can be said about the voltage drops? Well, we can actually figure this out because since these resistors are in series like this, if the current leaving here is I, then I know the current in this resistor is I and the current in this resistor is I. They both have the same current. And the question says they both have the same resistance. So if I use the fact that V equals I times R, if we have the same I and the same R, they must have the same voltage drop. So this must be 15 volts, and it must be 15 volts to get rid of that 30 volt source. Has to be. I'll even put a therefore there. If they're not the same, then what can we say about the division of the voltage? Well, again, we still have, because they're wired in series, we still have the same current going through them because there's no other junctions. All the skiers go down this hill, all the skiers go down this hill. And again, since V equals I times R, here we have a big R, so this would be I times big R versus I times little r, you know what? Voltage 1 is going to be bigger than voltage 2. Got to be. Because you're multiplying the same current by a bigger number. If they are simple ratios of each other, we can relate the voltage drops via the same ratios. So, for example, if this resistance is twice as big as this resistance, this voltage drop will be twice as big as this voltage drop. Since I'm starting with 30 volts, you know what? That's going to be 20 volts. That's going to be 10 volts. i got to be honest, I hardly ever use part C. I do use this trick fairly often for part A. And I absolutely, absolutely use the idea that if two resistors don't have any junctions between them, they must have the same current going through them. So, although it's helpful at first to label the voltages at each point in the circuit, from now on, so that we don't clutter up our diagrams, we're only going to label the gains and the drops. You know what? We're going to label the chairlift. We're going to label the resistors. We'll remember that anything written to a battery is a voltage gain. Anything written next to a resistor is a voltage loss. We don't need to put a negative in front of it. We just know it is. So we're going to use our two equations, V equals I times R and power equals V times I. Also remember that this means that R equals V over I, and it also means that I equals V over R. And we can now find or solve this circuit. So pause for a second. So example 8 says find the unknown voltage drops, currents, resistances, and power lost in each resistor. Now, there are some steps you want to do when you're solving a circuit. Here they are. Don't worry about writing this down. I'm going to send this to you, but I'm not going to send it to you as part of this lesson. I'll actually include it in the next lesson because there's still one more mystery step that I have to cover with you. But for now, first thing, label downhill. Step two, try to find total current, leaving the battery. Step three, Look for any place in the circuit where you know two things, because if we know two things, we know four things. And then step four, ski. Use Kirchhoff's laws to figure out any missing currents or missing voltages. And anytime you find something, go back to step two. Do I know the total current now? Because if you find the total current, the question's going to fall apart. Step three. So... I mean, if you really want to, you could take a picture, pause the video, take a picture of this on your smartphone if you're watching on a computer, or if you really want to, you can take a screenshot right now 
and use this, but I'm going to make this prettier and I'll actually include it in your notes next lesson. Here we go. Step one, label downhill. Step two, do I know the total current leaving the battery? Well, right here, there is four amps in the first resistor, so that must mean there's four amps right here. There's four amps right here. You know what? There is four amps leaving the battery. This question's going to fall apart. How many amps? Four. So now, let's see if we can... Uh, oh, and I know two things, which means I know four things. I also know the resistor. Uh, R equals V over I, so it's going to be 6 divided by 4, which I'm pretty sure is 1.5 ohms. I also know the power. Power is V times I, 6 times 4, 24 watts. Let's pretend all three of these resistors are light bulbs. This is a 24 watt light bulb. Okay. Do I know two things here? No. Do I know two things here? No. So now we're going to ski. There are two ski runs. I can do this one, or I can do this one. So let's do the inner one first, just because. Let's see. Let's do the current rule first. How many amps? Four amps. Four amps. How many amps went this way? Three amps. Ooh, ooh. How many amps went the other way? One amp. Okay. Now let's try the voltage law. How many volts? 18 volts. How many volts do I lose going through this ski hill? Six, leaving how many? Twelve. Whee! I went down that resistor, and that was enough to get me down to the ground. So, if I had to get rid of 12 volts, this resistor must be using 12 volts. Stop. I know two things. I know all four things. Let's see. Resistance is V over I, 12 divided by 3. This must be a 4 ohm resistor. Power is V times I. It must be a 36 watt bulb. Now let's ski this run. I have 18 volts. Six volts, leaving how many? Twelve volts. Whee! That got me down to the ground. I must have lost twelve volts going through that resistor. Oh, knock, knock. Who's there? I know two things. I know four things. So, R must be V over I, twelve ohms. And power must be V times I, 12 times 1, 12 watts. So here would be a nice question that I might give you. I might give you this circuit, and instead of saying, find the unknown voltage drops, currents, and resistances, and power lost in each resistor, I might say, these are three light bulbs. Which one is the brightest bulb? My mom says I'm not the brightest bulb. No, she means something different by that. Which one of these is the brightest bulb? Well, 24 watts, 36 watts, 12 watts, the middle bulb must be the brightest bulb. This is how we can solve a circuit. By the way, you can also build these in the FET DC circuit construction kit. Remember we played with that a couple lessons ago? So I Googled it again, and I actually built this circuit. So I gave us our 18 volt battery. So first of all, Let's check the uh, currents going through here. I added a switch just be, so to close everything, so when I so, to, so that electricity wouldn't flow. But if I close the switch, okay, now current is flowing. Uh, how many amps leaving the battery? Four amps. How many amps going through here? 
three amps, one amp, four amps. So my currents work. Now I said that we were losing uh, six volts going through here. Let's see. I put the red on the positive side. I put the black on the negative side and I get six volts. Is that what I had in my, yep. Then how many volts do I lose going through this resistor? To measure the height difference, I touch either side of the resistor, losing 12 volts. What did I say? 12 volts and four ohms, four ohms. Here, how many volts do I lose? 12 volts, 12 ohms. This doesn't do power, but you can build the circuit if you want to. I mean, it's nicer if you can actually check the answer uh, by running the calculations, but you can build the circuit and check your answers. To modify values, all you do is you click on anything, and I was able to change the resistance, and so I made it what I thought it was supposed to be. I said, it's supposed to be 4 ohms, and then when I turned the circuit on and checked all the numbers, it all matched. By the way, we're pretending our wires have no resistance, and our battery has no resistance to make the math nicer. I'm not going to build one of these for every question, but you can if you really want to. Let's do another one. Step one. Label downhill. Step two. Find the total current leaving the battery. Uh, ooh! I can figure it out because I got 1.5 amps that went this way. Sorry, 1 amp that went this way. 1.5 amps that went this way. You know what? I must have 2.5 amps leaving the battery, which means this is 2.5 amps. This question's going to fall apart. Step three, look for anywhere where we know two things. Knock, knock. Who's there? I know two things. Then I know four things there. So the voltage is 21 volts. Uh, resistance is going to be V over I. So it's going to be 21 divided by 2.5, 8.4 ohms. Should have been able to do that in my head. And then the power is going to be V times I, 21 times 2.5. That I can do in my head. It's going to be 42 plus 10.5. Is it going to be 52.5, I think? Let me double check that. 2.5 watts. Do I know two things here? Not yet. Do I know two things here? Not yet. Okay, so now we're going to ski. So I'll ski the inner one first. I start with 35 volts. I lose 21 volts, leaving 14. Whee! That got me all the way to the bottom. So in that resistor there, I must have lost 14 volts. Knock, knock. Who's there? I know two things, so I know four things. Resistance is V over I. 14 divided by 1 must be 14 ohms. So I'm using this. And power is V times I, which is going to be 14 watts, 14 times 1. Let's ski again. Now, there's two ways that I can do this. I can start here and I can go gain 35, lose 21, leaving 14, whee, going down this hill, and I can realize, hey, I also lose 14 volts here. Or I could have said, you know what? Since we start here and end here, both of these must have the same voltage drop. Knock, knock. Who's there? I know two things. Resistance is going to be whatever 14 divided by 1.5 is. 9.33 ohms. And power is going to be V times I, 14 times 1.5, which I'm pretty sure is 21 watts. Hey, if these are all light bulbs, which bulb is the brightest? Top left 
middle or right, top left. C. Step one, label downhill. Step two, try and figure out total current. Um, I know one amp went this way, but I don't know how many amps went this way, so I don't know how many amps were going through here. Step one, label downhill. Step two, try and find the total current. Step three, look for any place in the circuit where I know two things. Right there. So I also know the resistance. R is going to be V over I. So it's going to be 35 divided by 1, or 35. Let's change colors, Mr. Do it. 35 ohms. Oh, I'll point out, it's kind of tricky to show me your work here, because you'll notice I'm doing a lot of this straight on calculator with and then arrows and skiing. If you have labeled your circuit correctly, I'm not going to say, show me the work somewhere. I'm going to assume that you didn't just cheat and lift the answers off, okay? Power is V times I, which is 35 times 1. Heck, I can do that in my head. Now what, Mr. Duick? Now we ski. If I ski this outer run... I don't know this voltage and I don't know that voltage. There's two I don't know. So let's ski this inner run. I start out with 40 volts. I don't know how much I lost going through that hill, but going through this hill, I lost 35 volts. That got me to the bottom. So how many volts must I have lost in that upper ski run, in that resistor? Must have been five volts. Now what? Well, do I know the total current yet? No. Do I know two things on either of the other two mystery resistors? Nope. Ski again. This time, let's ski the outer run. I have 40 volts. I lose 5 volts, leaving 35. Whee! I go through that ski run, and it gets me all the way to the bottom. So I must have lost 35 volts. Now, the other thing you could have said is, you could have said, Mr. Duick, since we started here, split up, and met up, this hill right here and this hill right here have to have the same voltage. So you could have filled that 35 in right away. And I'll be honest, that's what I would have done. But you pick up on these things as you get good. Here's the important thing. Knock, knock. I know two things. Then I know four things. Uh, I must be V over R if V equals I times R. So this must be 7.0 amps. And power is V times I, 7 times 135, which is 7 times, I said 7 times 135, 7 times 35, which is 245 watts. Oh, I still got these missing. Go back to step two. Can you figure out the total current leaving the battery? Now I can, because down this ski hill, I have one amp. Down this path, I have seven amps. You know what? Ha ha. Eight amps must be leaving the battery and going through that first resistor. Knock, knock. Step three. I know two things, I know four things. So R is V over I, it's gonna be five divided by eight, 0.625 ohms. And power is gonna be V times I, which is gonna be 40 watts. If these are light bulbs, which of these is the brightest bulb? by far this one, 
And in fact, I might even say, I'm not so sure it's a light bulb. You know what? Maybe it's like a stage spotlight or a searchlight because 245 watts is a pretty bright bulb. My mom says I'm one of the brightest bulbs. That's good. D. I, by the way, now need to confess, I love solving circuits. These are like, like Sudoku puzzles to me. I find them almost zen addictive and relaxing. And it's, it, you know what? It's sort of like when you're trying to untie a really stubborn knot. If someone gives you a, you know, tangled up coil of rope, there is something kind of zen in untangling and untying it. It's kind of the same for me for solving circuits. So step one, label downhill. Step two, try to find the total current leaving the battery. Oh, that's easy. Five amps. Because there's no junctions between the battery and there. Well, that means this question's going to fall apart. Step three, look for anywhere you know two things. Or as I often say, knock, knock, who's there? I know two things. Knock, knock, who's there? I know two things. So I definitely know the current here. Uh, if V equals I times R, then I equals V over R. So V over R. You know what? This is 3.0 ohms. Amps. Amps. Ooh. And just like that, since I know 5 amps was flowing in and 3 amps went this way, that must mean that there are 2.0 amps over here. Ooh, and they recombine, so that must mean there are 5.0 amps here. Knock, knock. I know two things. V equals I times R, so this must be 20 volts. I don't know two things there. I don't know two things there. Oop, didn't mean to erase that. So now we're going to ski. I'm probably going to do the inner loop, this one, because if I do the outer loop, there's two things I don't know. But if I do the inner loop, let's see. I start with 70 volts. I don't know what I lose there, but I lose 15. I lose 20, and that gets me to the ground. You know what? This has to be 35 volts. Knock, knock. I know two things. I know four things. Uh, R is going to be V over I, 35 divided by 5, which is 7.0 ohms. And power is se uh, V times I. It's going to be 35 times 5, which is going to be 150 plus 5. Is it 175? 175 watts. Oh, I forgot to do power for this one down here. Power is V times I, 100 watts. Do I know two things? Well, let's ski. Now, by the way, I could have actually saved myself some time. As soon as I got that two amps, I could have said, wait a minute, we're splitting up right here. We're meeting up right here. If this is 15, I could have said this is 15 volts. But even if I didn't see that, I could ski. 70 volts. Lose 35. Leaving 35. I don't know how much, but I lost 20. That got me down to the ground. You know what? This has to be 15 volts. Knock, knock. I know two things. I know four things. This has got to be a V over I 7.5 ohms. And the power is V times I, 30 watts. Oh, I didn't do power for the middle one. Power is V times I, 15 times 3, 45 watts. E. There's a bit of a typo glitch, and I haven't been able to fix it. Uh, this line right here 
should actually be right there. And so downhill is this way, this way, this way, this way. It's a glitch in the diagram, and I can't edit the diagram anymore, and I've been too lazy to redo the whole diagram. All righty. So step one, label downhill. Step two, try to find total current leaving the battery. Well, the total current leaving the battery would be the same as the current going through there. I don't really know the total current. I don't know the current there or there or there. So let's go to step three. Knock, knock. Look for any two places in the circuit where you know two things. Knock, knock. I know two things. Then I know four things. I can tell you that the current is going to be V over R since V equals I times I. R, v equals I times R. So the current is 4 amps, and that's also the total current leaving the battery. I'll just jot that down so I don't forget. This question's going to fall apart. So, label downhill done. Total current done. Look for any place where you know two things. We did that. Oh, I can also find the power here. Power is going to be V times I. It's going to be 32 watts. Now what? Ski. I wouldn't ski this run because there's two things I don't know. I would ski the inner run. Let's see. I start out with 32 volts. I don't know what I lose there, but I lose 8 volts and that's enough to get me back down to the ground. So starting with 32, losing 8 What's left over for right there? It's got to be 24. Now, that also means that this whole run here, both of these are going to add to 24. doesn't mean they're each 24, but it means if this is 10, this will be 14. If this is 3, this will be 21. They'll add to 24. I'll come back to that. But here, knock, knock. I know two things. I know four things. Current is going to be V over I, 24 divided by 10. Brandon, I'll bet even you can do that in your head. It's going to be uh, 2.4 amps. Power is going to be V times I. It's going to be 24 times 2.4, which is going to be 57.6 watts. Now, I could ski, but currents are really, really useful. If 2.4 amps went this way, and I had 4 amps coming through here, 2.4 amps went this way, that must mean that 1.6 amps is going through each of these guys. Knock, knock. I know two things. That must mean that uh, V times... I, well, I know the voltage. By the way, earlier I think I was just throwing some voltages around. This is 10 volts because they told me that. So if this is 24 volts, I can also say this has to be 14 volts. I can go R is V over I on the top one there. It's going to be 10 divided by 1.6, uh, 6.25 ohms. Power is going to be V times I. It's going to be uh, 16 watts. For the bottom one, R is going to be V over I. It's going to be 14 divided by 1.6, 8.75 ohms. And power is going to be V times I. It's going to be 14 times 1.6, which is 22.4 watts. So these are Kirchhoff's laws. Light bulb questions are good questions to show if you understand Kirchhoff's laws because the brightness of the bulb is related to power. Example 9. The bulbs below are identical. They have the same R. Which one is brighter? Well, so they both have the same R. Not only that, I can tell you if I ski 
this run right here, that must mean that in this resistor, I lose 10 volts. And if I ski this run right here, that must mean that in this resistor, I also lose 10 volts. Mr. Duick, how are you losing 20 volts with a 10 volt battery? It's not how circuits work. Circuits work, the total voltage doesn't equal the battery. The voltage along any closed loop or ski run will equal the battery. Hey, wait a minute. If they each have the same voltage and they each have the same resistance, and I know that one way to calculate power is V squared over R, then what can you tell me about the brightness of the bulbs? Got to be the same. So same R, same voltage, also same current, but I don't even need that since power equals V squared over R. Same power, which means same brightness. If these two bulbs are identical, which bulb is brighter? Okay. So if they're identical, it means they have the same resistance. Ooh, wait a minute. If I have a current leaving the battery of I, I think each of these has the same current going through it because there are no junctions, no, co no ways to split up. Oh, and since now this also means each of these has the same voltage, each of these must be 5 volts because the total is 10 volts. So I could say uh, 5 volts, 5 volts volts, but that, I don't even need that. I could also then say, since I know that power is I squared R, I can say same R, the question told me that, same I from Kirchhoff's laws, therefore same power, same brightness. Don't think that you'll always have the same brightness. These were just two generic questions that I threw at you. That is Kirchhoff's laws for current and for voltage. You need to practice this, and I'm going to be throwing a fair bit at you. You can do your homework right on the sheet here, and in terms of showing me work, now, if you don't have a printer at home, I realize it's a pain to recopy these circuits, and I feel bad, but if you don't have a printer at home, you'll just have to copy these circuits onto a piece of paper. In terms of work, uh, if you just in the margin like I've been doing, show R equals V over I and I equals V over R, and I'll, I'll accept that and then just write on here what they're finding. Uh, here, they're just asking you to find voltages and currents. I didn't bother often asking you to find the unknown power. Again, I figure if you know the voltage, if you know the current, you can find power by going V times I. What's your homework? Number one is good. Number two is good. Three is good. Four is good. I'm going to skip five. Six is good. Your hint for number six is since these two resistors are identical, they're going to split the current 50 50, which means if that's one amp, that's one amp. And these two are going to split the current 50 50 as well because they're identical resistors. Seven is good, eight is good, nine is good, ten is good, eleven is good, twelve is good, I'll skip thirteen, I'll skip fourteen, I'll skip fifteen. I'll skip 16. Again, as I said before, I will email out a solution key on 
Wednesday. You'll probably find the YouTube video of the solution key way more helpful because my handwritten solution won't show the steps involved. All you'll see is, oh, he filled everything in. Yeah, but I did it by following these steps. Just so you have this, you know what? What I'll do is I'll paste this into the bottom of the notes here. I think it'll fit. Copy. Can I fit it at the bottom of this page here? Totally. I didn't include step five because you don't know step five yet. Okay. I miss you all. I hope you're doing well. This was a much longer lesson. I really wanted to go meticulously so that you could wrap your brain around it. Hope that helped.